Hi everyone and welcome back. This is Mindy Egan. In today's video, I'm going to be creating a card using the Honey Bee Stamps Shoreline Scene Builder. This is going to create a beautiful tropical scene just by die cutting. Here's a look at the Shoreline Scene Builder die set and I'm also going to be using a stamp set for my sentiment and this is Seize the Day. I'm going to start my card by picking out all the dies that I want to use for my card. Honeybee Stamps have a gra has a graphic put together of what everything would look like laid out on a card. So I kind of went off of that. This first one I picked out there is actually our water. And then that second one there is kind of like the foam that goes on the ocean water. There are some clouds here. And then these kind of rounded ones are going to be sand dunes. There's three of them. There's also three clouds. I'm only going to use two because I really wanted the fluffy cloud. And then there are three sand dunes. So they kind of have that rounded edge to them. I'm going to use all three. There are also some dies here to create a fence. And you can see there's an umbrella and some birds, a few other things. But I'm just going to end up uh, finishing this off with the palm tree. Then I also have some different shades of cardstock. I'm going for something completely out of the ordinary with this. So if you have a little scrap cardstock drawer, this is going to be perfect for it. And the mini die cutting machine is going to be amazing for this. I just put this on my uh, work surface and I trimmed everything down to fit onto those smaller die cut plates and then just started cutting everything out. So the white piece is going to have the foam for the waves and then the white clouds. And this is where I'm getting a little crazy with my card. I am doing a light purple cardstock for my sand dunes. I think this turned out really awesome. This was just kind of a different color combination, but I think it really gives that tropical vibe. So my fences are going to be a dark purple, and then I'm going to have black for the palm trees. I thought about doing a dark purple, which I think would look really good, but I just really was drawn to the black. So after everything is die cut out, I can just fold up the sides of my Bitty Buzz Cutter and set it off on the side. I'm going to do some a little bit of ink blending to some of these pieces. Now this piece, which is going to be the water, the flat edge is going to be the top of your water line. So I'm starting off doing some ink blending with peacock feathers. And then I'm going to bring in, I think it's either blueprint sketch or prize ribbon. It's just whatever was left over on my blending brush and adding that right to the very edge. So now just to give you an idea of how this is going to look and help kind of set the scene, I'm going to take those little white pieces that we die cut out. This is going to be the foam on the waves. That longest piece actually kind of matches up and lines up with the curve of that blue piece. So it's going to shape it and frame it on the very edge there. Now these other two pieces, these smaller pieces, are kind of the waves that are out in the ocean a little bit really doesn't matter on the placement on these. You can uh, attach them anywhere you want. And I'm just using some liquid glue to attach them. I'm going to bring in my sand dunes and start adding some color to those. So for this one, I am using wilted violet, just very lightly going from the top. I'm not coloring in the whole thing. I wanted to show that transition of color from the light cardstock to that ink blending and just apply that to all three of the sand dunes. Then I'm going to bring in a villainous potion or villainous, yes, villainous potion, that really, really dark purple, and just add a very smidge to the top. I'll set these off on the side and start working on my background. So since I have purple sand dunes, I want to create a purple beach. I know there's no such thing as a purple beach. Well, maybe there is. I really have no idea because I don't leave my house but I wanted a purple beach. So I'm starting off with shaded lilac and I'm starting at one end and just blending up maybe about a third of the way. The rest of it is going to be my sky. I'm going to then add in a little bit of contrast by bringing in wilted violet towards the very bottom and just bring that color up about half of what I have there in that shaded lilac. So once I have this done, I'm going to bring my water back in to kind of line this up. I did go ahead and trim the cardstock down to three and three quarters by five inches. So now you can see on that right hand side, our water line is kind of curving up and I don't want to end up blending in colors from my sky into that. So I'm going to mask that part off. I'm just using some two inch wide post-it tape. And what I'm doing here is using the grid line of my mat to make sure that I have a straight line there. I was playing with this, this idea once before and I had gotten some yellow and pinks down in my beach that I didn't want. So I thought it was easier to just completely mask this off. Then I can just fold those ends. 
around the side of my card. And I'm going to bring this back over to my stencil mat so I can do my ink blending. I'm starting with mustard seed, which came in pretty hot and heavy right in the middle there. I dabbed off a little bit, but it was still pretty strong. Now I'm going to come in with picked raspberry and I'm going to use that all the way around the outer edges. So this is why I trimmed my card panel down because I want the edges to show the vibrancy and transition of the color. I don't want to end up chopping it down. So I thought it would be better to trim my panel down first. Now I'm bringing that picked raspberry into the mustard seed and I was getting a slight orange, but the orange just wasn't as bright as I wanted it to be. So I'm going to bring in ripe persimmon and go right in that area where the pink and the yellow kind of mixed. I'm going to go back over this area with my picked raspberry and the mustard seed just to kind of help smooth out the transition of those colors. And then I thought about bringing in or I did do actually end up bringing in a purple to go around the very, very outer edges. I believe this is the Villainous Potion again. Wilted Violet I think would work or even Seedless Preserves. But I just kind of wanted to tie in that purple a little bit that I'm using for my sand and my sand dunes. So now that the blending is done, I can carefully just peel up that post-it tape which masked it off beautifully and did not rip my paper. I'm going to go ahead and get my water line here attached to the front of the card just so I can kind of base everything and know where I'm going. I'm just attaching that using a tape runner and you can see how by masking off the bottom we didn't bleed the scene or the sky into that water line. I decided I wanted to add some sparkly splatters to my sky so I masked off the bottom portion once again and I have these Lindy's Magicals I think they are. Um, I seen Jennifer McGuire use them. I thought they were gorgeous. I have them and I haven't used them yet. So I put a little bit of that powder on my work surface, mixed it with water and flicked it onto the background. I apologize it's going to get out of focus here for just a second while I flick this off an acrylic block to add smaller splatters. And this came out super, super sparkly. If you don't have these, you could absolutely use uh, Perfect Pearls, would work just as well. I just really wanted to give these a try and I'll show you a close up here of how super sparkly they are. And it looks really great on this tropical scene that I'm creating. I'm going to set this off on the side to dry on its own for a little bit and I'm going to work on my sentiment. I'm using the Seize the Day stamp set, found a sentiment that I thought would coordinate well with my background and tropical theme. And I have just some 80 pound white cardstock here that I placed the sentiment on top of, picked up with the door of the Misty. I'm just prepping my stamp with my hand by rubbing my hand over it and then stamping this in the Honeybee Stamps Intense Ink. Stamp it one more time just to make sure I have a really good clear impression. And then I can take the coordinating die, line that up over the sentiment, hold it down with a low tack tape, and then I can bring in my Bitty Buzz Cutter again. I love having a mini die cutting machine on my desk because it makes it so easy and convenient to die cut out small pieces like this. I'm gonna start the assembly of my card I have here uh, trimmed down two more pieces of white cardstock that measures the three and three quarters by five inches that my top panel is. And I'm just going to layer these together to create some dimension for the front of my card. Now I can start assembling my scene. So I did speed this up a little bit. It is a lot of gluing, but it really helps just building the scene up little by little. Sometimes I'm going to place all of the items on the card just to get an idea of where it's all going to sit. One of the reasons I'm not attaching this to a card front just yet is because I'm going to have some things kind of bleed off the edge. So I want to make sure I'm able to still trim off those excess pieces. So I had started with my fence in the background and layered the sand dunes on top. I did struggle with placement of my clouds a little bit. So those will be bleeding off the edge just a bit. And then I'm adding my palm tree. One of the sand dunes, sand dunes there is going to get popped up with some foam squares and also my sentiment. So I am kind of leaving those uh, not glued down just yet. Now that I have most of the assembly done on the front of the card, I can go ahead and add foam squares behind that smaller sand dune. Remove the backing of that and attach that so it covers up the bottom of my tree trunk. I'll then flip this panel over and trim off any of that excess that's overhanging on the edge. And then I can attach my sentiment using foam squares. I love adding the foam squares for this because I think that helps set the sentiment apart from my colorful background. I have an A2 size side folding card base that I'm holding closed with a low tack tape. And then I'm adding tape runner to the back of my ink blended panel. 
And I'm going to line this up over that card front or the, my uh, card base, just making sure I'm keeping my margins nice and even, and it leaves that really nice clean edge. So that is going to finish off my tropical scene for you today, which I'm really happy how this came out, and I love all the vibrant colors. These products will be available for purchase on the Honey Bee Stamps website on June 30th at 8 p.m. Central Time. Thank you so much for joining me today, and see you again soon.